Although the evaluation of cardiac function and hemodynamics in sick children by physical examination are unreliable, clear benefits have been demonstrated from integration of clinical assessment with bedside echocardiography. A qualitative assessment of left ventricular contractility can be quickly performed by eyeballing by an experienced physician, especially in emergencies, providing useful information on the level of filling and performance of the left ventricle. It is important to use several windows to evaluate the left ventricle, as no single view can provide a complete picture of contractility. This information can, and probably should, be complemented by an objective assessment of left ventricular function. The most commonly used parameters to assess left ventricular systolic function are measurement of fractional shortening and ejection fraction. The left ventricular fractional shortening is obtained from M-mode tracings or two-dimensional imaging in the parasternal long axis view, at the tips of the mitral valve leaflets, or in the parasternal short axis view, at the level of the papillary muscles. The left ventricular end diastolic dimension is measured at our wave of cardiac cycle, and left ventricular end systolic dimension obtained at end of T wave. The fractional shortening percentage is calculated using the following equation. Normal values for fractional shortening in infants and children have been established, and are typically between 26 and 45%. Left ventricular function may be objectively classified into mild dysfunction, between 20 and 25 percent, moderate dysfunction, between 15 and 19 percent, and severe dysfunction, equal or below 14 percent. The disadvantage of this method is that it assumes a cylinder shape of the left ventricle. One should be aware of the limitations. If left ventricle shape is altered, it may affect the estimation of fractional shortening leading to under or overestimation. Ejection fraction reflects stroke volume assessed on echocardiography. It can be calculated by using any echo mode, such as two-dimension, M mode, and three-dimension mode, which can delineate LV endomyocardial lining at end systole and end diastole. The recommended method for ejection fraction calculation is the Simpsons or modified Simpsons method using apical 4-chamber and apical 2-chamber views. The left ventricle cavity is divided into cylinders or discs, and uses the radius and length of the multiple discs measured to calculate the left ventricle and diastolic volume and left ventricle and systolic volume. This may be challenging in sick neonates needing mechanical ventilation where windows can be poor and delineation of endocardium may be suboptimal. Relative tachycardia and non-elliptical left ventricle shape may give inaccurate measurements. Despite these limitations, ejection fraction is preferred over fraction shortening as it accounts images for regional wall motion abnormalities. The accepted normal value for ejection fraction in newborn is greater than 55%. Lower values are consistent with slight, between 41 and 55%, moderate, between 31 and 40%, and marked impairment, below 30%, of left ventricle function. The image acquisition for assessment of fraction shortening and ejection fraction is rapid and easy and the calculations are simple and easily reproducible making them good bedside echocardiographic parameters for use in emergency situations and in the routine clinical practice. However, they are dependent on preload and afterload, and also influenced by the ventricular geometry and interventricular septal deviation. This should be taken into account while making clinical decisions based upon these measurements and it has been recommended to use them in conjunction with clinical parameters and other echocardiographic parameters. These are excellent tools to monitor the clinical progress by serial assessments longitudinally over time. During the cardiac cycle, the atrioventricular valve moves toward and away from the apex. This longitudinal deformation can be best assessed by interrogating longitudinal annular velocities of the atrioventricular valve and interventricular septum using tissue Doppler imaging in apical four-chamber view. There are two basic tissue Doppler imaging techniques, 
pulsed wave tissue Doppler and color-coded tissue Doppler. The user can use velocity time curves by both techniques to measure peak velocities and time intervals. For pulse wave tissue Doppler velocities, is recommended placing the stationary sample area just apical to the atrioventricular plane at end diastole. To obtain reliable measurements, it is also important to use a low gain setting, a sample area of 2 to 3 mm, a velocity range plus minus 0.16 m per second, and an angle of insonation less than 20 degrees. Using pulse wave tissue Doppler, a velocity waveform is generated. Spectral above the baseline, S comma shows movement of myocardium during systole, while E and the waves, below the baseline, show diastolic movement of myocardium. Several studies describing reference ranges of tissue Doppler velocities and displacements from the apical four-chamber view in premature neonates and term neonates have been published. Most studies of time intervals by tissue Doppler have used pulse wave tissue Doppler. This technique allows for the measurement of the left ventricle myocardial performing index, not influenced by the heart size and geometry, which can be derived by dividing the sum of the systolic size volumic intervals against the time of the systolic ejection. Left ventricle myocardial performing index average values reported in neonates are 0.30.6 and this index decreases with gestational age, with maturation and with reduced load. In presence of mitral regurgitation, the rate of pressure rise in early systole may be used to evaluate global left ventricular contractility. As there is no significant change in left atrial pressure during isovolumetric contraction, the index reflects left ventricular pressure changes. Using continuous wave Doppler, mitral regurgitation spectral is acquired to calculate dp to dt ratio, which represents time duration between change of velocity from 1 to 3 meters per second on the mitral regurgitation spectral. The normal value of mitral regurgitation of dp to dt ratio is greater than or equal to 1000 mm of mercury per second and a value of 500 mm of mercury per second is indicative of severe systolic dysfunction. There are limitation of assessing cardiac function using this measurement, presence of mitral regurgitation is a prerequisite and it is influenced by preload, afterload, heart rate, and myocardial hypertrophy. Quantitative assessment of the left ventricular diastolic function may be done by analyzing Doppler spectral of mitral inflow, or tissue Doppler imaging evaluation in the lateral mitral annulus. The pulse wave Doppler across mitral inflow is composed of two waves, an E wave representing early passive ventricular filling, preload dependent, and an A wave representing late diastolic active filling as a result of atrial contraction. The mitral E to A ratio, velocity, and deceleration time of the E wave can be altered in patients with left ventricular diastolic dysfunction. Mild diastolic dysfunction is characterized by an inversion of the mitral early and late diastolic E to A Doppler waves with a ratio below 0.8. The echocardiographic parameters of severe left ventricular diastolic dysfunction are as follows. Mitral valve Doppler E to A ratio greater than 2 and a deceleration time of the Doppler mitral E wave below 160 millisecond. The diastolic function of ventricles can also be assessed using tissue Doppler imaging, which allows measuring peak myocardial velocities using pulsed wave Doppler. With this technique, myocardial movement velocity is measured directly rather than the Doppler velocity of blood flow across valves. Depending upon the area of interest, a pulsed Doppler cursor is placed on the myocardial wall, mitral, septal, or tricuspid annulus, and peak myocardial velocities are recorded. Three waveforms are obtained, a peak systolic wave, S, an early diastolic wave, E, and an end diastolic wave, a comma produced by atrial contraction. The S wave from mitral annular velocity has been shown to correlate with global left ventricular systolic myocardial function, while the valuation of E and O waves allows estimating ventricular diastolic function. 
Normative reference ranges in newborn infants have been published. The echocardiographic assessment of blood flow across any vessel or outflow tract can be performed by multiplying the cross-sectional area of the vessel by the velocity time integral of blood flow across a specific point where cross-sectional area and heart rate are calculated, and applying these values in the equation herein reported. The systemic blood flow equals left ventricle output in the absence of cardiac shunts. The cross-sectional area is calculated by measuring the diameter at the hinge point of atrioventricular annulus at end systole in the parasternal long axis view, and velocity time integral is measured just proximal to the atrioventricular valve by using pulsed wave Doppler in the apical 5 chamber view. Heart rate is calculated automatically by the ultrasound machine from the electrocardiographic recording. The assessment of left ventricle output on echocardiography correlates strongly with the measurements acquired by other well-established techniques. Normal values are between 150 and 400 milliliters per kilogram per minute.